Aloha and welcome back to Talk Story with John Waihe'e. We have got an interesting uh, show for you today. Um, about a week or two ago, uh, three of us uh, former governors were having to happen to be having lunch together at uh, Murphy's Grill, Irish Grill downtown. And Ben Caetano, Neil Abercrombie, and myself started to talk about the problems of the world. And it just was inevitable that the conversation led to the Halava Stadium. Now, Ben, unfortunately, couldn't be here with us today. But I happen to have as my guest, Neil Abercrombie, who, uh, as you know, is a very passionate advocate for anything that he believes in. And Neil decided they just voluntarily uh, said, look, I'll write something up. Would you guys join me on it? And we all ended up doing that. And so uh, Neil put together essentially the article that uh, most of us have read that was submitted by the three, uh, three former governors. So I wanted to invite Neil and give him a chance to, you know, get the, Get, his, get get that issue out there in the in the open. So we have with us former governor, Neil Abercrombie. Welcome, Neil. Good to have you here. Mahalo, Mahalo Nui, John. Happy to be with you. And may I say by way of uh, the beginning that uh, don't sell you and Ben short on this. Oh, no, uh, no. I appreciate, I, 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 pre I appreciate the, the, uh, the, the, the plaudits uh, uh, about it, but this is a joint effort. And... Uh, uh, I'm very happy to be joining with you and Ben uh, on this. I, I think uh, it's it's very important for everybody to recognize, as Richard Barreca did in his uh, in his uh, editorial that accompanied the story in the uh, in, in the Star Advertiser, that uh, cumulatively, uh, just in terms of executive experience and 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 the exercise of it uh, between the three of us, we've got 20 years in. And uh, probably in terms of total political uh, exposure over time, it's probably more than 100 altogether between the three of us. That doesn't make us right. But what it does make us is, is, is aware that what's involved when you deal with serious issues like uh, the question of what to do with the 100 acres at, uh, at Halava, which was originally housing, and what to do with the University of Hawaii in terms of being able to sustain a collegiate stadium, uh, uh, not sustain, but construct a, a, a collegiate stadium that will sustain a Division One football team. Yeah, see, I see. I just thought when you said that between the three of us, we have uh, at least 100 years of political experience, or, or maybe 100 years of political experience, what, uh, what popped in my mind was the idea that, uh, you know, that's a long enough. We during that time we made enough mistakes to recognize one when we see one. Right? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> exactly. Precisely. So, you know. To, you know, Neil. Thing, you know the other thing to put a to, to put a a, a, a kind uh, per perspective on and a kind word on it. We also recognize that, that things change. What might have Absolutely. seemed useful and sensible and reasonable uh, a decade ago or a decade and a half ago. As a result of, of changed circumstances, pandemics, uh, 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 recessions, so uh, 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 climate changes, so on and so forth, um, it, it, it's no crime to say, yeah, we thought that was the right thing to do at the time, but uh, but the uh, circumstances have have altered that perspective, and I think that's what this is about. The question is, what what is the sensible thing to do at Halaba? What's the sensible thing to do with respect to Division One uh, sports? Uh, for the University of Hawaii, and uh, and we believe that uh, what we have proposed is a sensible, practical, timely solution uh, to those questions or that question, and it's something that the pu more, most important politically that the public can understand immediately. You don't have to go into extensive explanations about it. Well, Neil, you you spent the most time actually up at the university. I know Ben yeah. taught uh, taught a course and. And I, I teach an occasional class, yeah. but you actually, actually, you live up there, right close well, to the Well, my university. experience, John, you know, it's inter it's interesting to me anyway. When I, I had my birthday recently, my wife asked me, "What do you want for your birthday?" I said, "More birthdays." 
And uh, <laughs> the, the reason is my experience with the University of Hawaii is now 62 years. 62 wow. years ago, I, I started my collegiate career, my academic career, and, and eventually my political career at the University of Hawaii in September 1959. So believe me, I know every foot of the quarry, every foot of the area where the, the Ching uh, Complex Stadium is right now, uh, uh, as a matter of fact, where the parking parking garage is, when you went to law school down in the quarry and we were building right. the parking garage, I was, I was the higher ed chair in the House of Representatives when that parking garage got built and when the law school got built above it. So believe me, uh, again, I'm not saying everything that you and I and Ben are talking about is, is necessarily the right thing, but it, I will argue with anybody, we know what we're talking about when it comes to you. Well, you know, that. I, I want to exploit that knowledge because, you know, and, and just ask you, because one of the uh, one of the issues that, that I have heard is, oh, they, there just isn't enough room up at oh, the, that's not, uh, no. at the no, campus I, to, I, I to you, build I, a collegiate I would, stadium. Yeah, okay, what I would say to somebody like that, have you ever been there? Oh, well, no. Have you ever walked? or been around or through uh, the, the area that we're talking about? Well, no. Have you ever been, do, do you know where the, the Clarence Teaching uh, co Complex building is? Well, no, actually I don't. Is it next to the Duke uh, Kahanamoku swimming pool? Gee, I don't know. What about where? where is the ROTC building in relation to what we're, well, gee, I don't know. They don't have a clue. People who say that right. to you ha either haven't ever been there or haven't been there in a long, long time. They're, the 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 uh, oval, and I'm going to say oval because it's about an oval between the cliffs fronting the student dormitories and right. the parking garage, parking parking garage and law school right now, and the uh, Clarence Teaching uh, T C Ching uh, building, the ex present existing uh, 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 field and track and stadium, and the the Lesmore Kami baseball stadium, et cetera, et cetera. That land there is, is, can easily hold uh, a, a 27,000 uh, 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 capacity stadium, easily. That's fantastic. So I, I, you know, because as you say, most people haven't been in that part of the university. If you've been up there at all, you probably up at the, on the Malka campus, driving through or, uh, or, or seeing all these other buildings. Sheriff. Or you come down to Stan Sheriff and, and came in from the uh, from the uh, 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 Mackay side of, uh, of 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 the H one into Stan Sheriff and never went any further. I know when we uh, during my administration when we built the uh, Stan Sheriff Arena, what mm -hmm. it did was it just improved the quality of volleyball. It improved the quality oh. of all the, those types of uh, basketball. You know, because oh, yeah. prior to that, we used to have to, the university used to have to go down to the Blaisdell uh, <laughs> Center, you know. Well, yeah. But, you know, the facilities too, John, I mean, I was, I along with uh, with Fuzzy Hong and Gus Rethwich and some other guy, guys in the uh, original, uh, 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 one of the original uh, uh, post-statehood uh, uh, football teams, we started the weight room down there in Plum Gym, come on. Right, <laughs> right, exactly. And, and then you had Plum Gym, you know, which was. Yeah. It's one of these places which is better left to nostalgia. You know, yeah. you've actually been there and had to sweat through the games. Yeah. And I mean sweat, you know. That's and right. It, it was so my, uh, my was point is, again, I'm not, saying, I'm not saying we know everything, but uh, in terms of the logistics of the University of Hawaii at Manoa and, and, and what I'm going to call the quarry and everything associated with the, the quarry and varsity circle area, we know what we're talking about. Well, let me ask you this. What, what does the University of Hawaii football team get, if anything, from everything. having, uh, no, I mean from uh, no, playing I, out I, at Halava? Yeah. What do they I'm get saying, now yeah, from I'm not playing being, out I'm at not being, I'm not being a smart aleck with you when I say everything, because right now at Halava, they get nothing. Uh, they get absolutely nothing. They haven't been part of the conversation. They're not taken into account. Uh, I don't, I, you know, I, again, I'm not trying to throw rocks and none of the, neither you nor Ben or I are interested in getting in a fight with anybody verbally or otherwise about what they're doing. But the plain, simple fact of the matter is 
is that the University of Hawaii, uh, uh, at best up till now, is just another customer, just another client uh, that pays rent, uh, essentially, to, to the stadium authority out at Halava. They have not been a part of the conversation about this, this entertainment district that includes this, uh, this, this uh, bread and circuses coliseum that they want to build. And, uh, uh, and they, they, would have, they, they don't get any income from it. They don't share in the parking revenues. And yet they have to pay for the travel costs of teams that come out here. The football team is under a financial burden uh, that no other school in the in 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 the United States has to. So wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. I want to I want to get real clear on that sure. point. So okay. every other, as far as I know, uh, when uh, when a college team plays football, they get revenues for doing that. They, they that's right. Gate something. Now you we're saying that that doesn't happen. Uh, that's because the, uh, they don't have their own stadium. They don't. It, it, it is it is a state stadium, and the University of Hawaii is merely a customer. So when when if if a stadium is built, as I we all hope it will be, yeah. up on up on the campus, then what that means is that not only does that mean uh, a new facility for mm -hmm. the team to play in, it also means an enhancement of the entire program. Oh, and, and financially, it's the first thing that's made sense ever. The first Absolutely. thing that made sense ever, period. No and question the, about it. <laughs> that's irrefutable. Well, knowing irrefutable. knowing how it's much, how long it's, it's irrefutable. Happened. It's irrefutable. It is irrefutable that financially, the only thing that makes sense for the University of Hawaii is to have a collegiate level stadium at the Manoa campus. And it seems to me that uh, having that at campus will make it, you've you got a great fan base. I mean, the dorms oh. are all around there. Aren't they? Well, they, 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 not only will they have a great fan base, but it will, it will enable uh, 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 the school to, en to generate enthusiasm statewide. No question about it. No question. Well, we're, we're going to take a, a short break right now, and we'll be right back. In the meantime, we've got a few questions that came in. Okay. And uh, I'll let you think about it. One is, uh, you know, one question was, what about high school sports? You know, will will the high schools be allowed to play? I'm going to let you answer yes. that after the break. Yes. Okay. Yeah, no, <laughs> the answer is yes. The answer is yes. Okay, we'll do that. We'll take a right, uh, quick break and we'll be <laughs> right back with former Governor Neil Abercrombie. Thank you. Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, host of Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. I was the head coach of the Punahou Boys varsity tennis team for 22 years, and we were fortunate to win 22 consecutive state championships. My show is based on my two books, Beyond the Lines and Beyond the Game, which is about leadership, success, character, and creating a superior culture of excellence. Please tune in and watch my show every Monday at 11 a.m. on Think Tech Hawaii and on YouTube. Aloha. Aloha and welcome back to Talk Story with John Waihe and special guest, former Governor Neil Abercrombie. And uh, we are talking about yeah. Uh, uh, the fact that Neil, myself, and former Governor Caetano all wrote an article, and essentially what we're suggesting to the state is that we say aloha to a stadium out uh, at Halava and instead build something up at the University of Hawaii. Governor, uh, when we were ending our conversation before the break, we, we just talked about the fact that uh, we'll, you know, the important uh, an important uh, part of uh, question was, would high schools uh, be allowed to play in this collegiate stadium like they get to do out at, uh, uh, out at the Halava or used to be able to do at Halava? Yeah, the answer is yes. And uh, not only that, but 
the young uh, players will love it because the fans will be a lot like it was at the old Honolulu Stadium, uh, right where fans are right on the field. When you're at Aloha Stadium, it's like you're a, a million miles away from the from the uh, uh, from the action on the field. It's a fifty thousand seat stadium, so even when it was so called full, it was still empty and distant. Uh, there's no real connection between the fans and the stand and the players on the field. The, the quick answer is not only is it yes, but the high school players, particularly those players who are division one quality, will have an experience in which the fans are right there to back them up. And I think That's that will, will psychologically, exciting. yeah, we, 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 we must have a hundred young folks, including, but I'm not just talking about football, but uh, uh, there's probably 150, 200 athletes from women's volleyball to golfers to to uh, to to softball. Uh, they're up in schools on the mainland who who uh, 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 and they're capable of doing Division One, Division Two. Uh, um, uh, so you think a stadium on campus will stadium. actually will actually also help recruitment? I mean, oh, we should no be. A, I mean, no that's question. that's been a priority of ours. Well, isn't there's, it? there's one other element, John, on recruitment. Don't forget. If we, if we, especially if teams like to come out here to play in Hawaii, I think we can maximize the number of home games that we'll have as a result. And don't forget, from a national broadcasting point of view, the, the last game in the country that's capable of being broadcast nationwide takes place in Hawaii because of the time difference, the six hour time difference. So I bet you the ESPN or uh, CBS Sports Network, NBC Sports Network, Fox Sports Network, whatever, They'd love to broadcast the game at 11 o'clock or midnight uh, on the coast, nine o'clock on the coast. And it's only six o'clock uh, out here uh, in, in Hawaii. That would expose, if, if we have a competitive team, that exposes the, the Hawaii uh, football program to everybody in the country. Not only can Coach Graham and his team uh, recruit here in Hawaii with a collegiate stadium, believe me, they will have exposure to the mainland and people will want to come out here that want to play. I'm going to tell you one of the one of the problems you have faced, I have faced, you know, uh, anyone who's tried to do anything, yeah. uh, is this whole NIMBY, NIMBY attitude that sometimes sure. pops up, pops up and suddenly yeah. hit. And um, I, I was going to ask you, you know, how how would a stadium on the campus there at the University right. of Hawaii if affect the the Manoa? community, if at all, well, I mean. Okay, uh, remember I said that my experience with the University of Hawaii goes back 62 years, right back right. to state of 1959. I have lived there. I live right now, 62 years ago, I lived three blocks from the University of Hawaii. 62 years later, I live two blocks from the University of Hawaii. I have been, and let me tell you something about Manoa. They're not making any more land in Manoa. They're not making any more houses in Manoa. The Manoa community has been there for 62 years. That's the way it is. So, so the Manoa experience has been uh, uh, all these years. When we first, when I first was there 62 years ago, we had less than 10,000 people uh, on, on on the university campus. A few thousand people up where the where the uh, Korean Studies Center is now, and uh, and 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 uh, East West Center and so on. They were grazing cows up there back in 1959 and 60. My point being is that uh, we've gotten, and during your administration, you put the stand sheriff in. Now we have 10,000 people coming in for, for uh, um, uh, volleyball. volleyball. Uh, Les, Lesnore Kami Stadium, several thousand people come to that. My point is a, a, a stadium right now, a collegiate stadium would, would, would uh, probably just uh, uh, double that number. It, it can be handled quite easily. And when somebody says, oh, there's a lot of traffic there, believe me, that does not affect anybody in Manoa Valley. Well, well, you see, it seems to me you also got the, the Punahou Road up there as well as yeah. the University Avenue. I mean, yeah. and the homes themselves are going to be Malka yeah. of any Everything. of the uh, Everything in Manoa Valley is is up and away Malka or, or yeah, Malka and, 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 and away from what happens at the stadium. You have more traffic. Every day, every weekday, going to Midpac and to Punahou, than you have going to uh, uh, eight or ten times a year to a, a UH uh, 
football game in 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 the uh, in varsity circle down in the quarry. Come on, who's kidding? Well, I, I tell you, I got one. I guess you know. The, then the other question would be parking, since you talked about it. I'm I'm assuming yeah. that, that there's ways to handle parking. Uh, oh yeah, that's not a problem. First of all, you got again thanks to the Wahe administration, we've got uh, Stan Sheriff and 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 thanks to uh, Fudge Matsuda and Neil Abercrombie and Walter Muraoka, who was the was the planner for uh, for Kapiolani, the Kapiolani Community College and Community College. Uh, we've got a park, parking structure at right now uh, already in existence at uh, at uh, at Manoa uh, in, in the quarry. Uh, there's plenty of room, by the way, down in, in var, uh, off Varsity Circle and in 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 the quarry area to add more parking for like uh, 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 um, uh, what do you call you know you, you have your tailgating your, and all tailgating that and so on. You're tailgating that, and it, very easy to to uh, then get a, a shuttle system. From KCC or, or HCC, uh, 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 different schools around and so on. Easy. Well, I, I have to mention computer, K, uh, KCC because I, I remember Neil when you were in the legislature. How yeah. what a strong advocate you were for that uh, community college. Yeah, and and and, and McKinley. You can park the, the, the field at McKinley. We, uh, you know, <laughs> the other thing. Remember the old Honolulu Stadium. People made money parking cars in their driveway and on their lawn. Yeah. You could charge five bucks for the thing. You could charge ten. I mean, the the churches and the and the uh, and uh, the the well, schools. I remember. I remember McKinney. What I remember most about it was everybody coming close. You know, come on, coming in. Hey, we spend a lot of time on the yeah. stadium and the need for the uh, collegiate stadium, right. yeah. uh, collegiate stadium. But I want to uh, you know pivot a little bit because there. Our article had two parts to it, and the other part was housing. I exactly. mean, recognizing the need for housing. What moving? What does? What would it mean in terms of housing if we if this stadium switched to uh, to a well, collegiate what, stadium? Well, no. What it would mean actually is just what you said: housing. What they have in mind out there now, they call it the new Aloha Stadium Entertainment District. The word housing doesn't even appear. The official wow. title, and the, hear me now, all you guys out there that are listening in, hear me now. The official title for this development, the so-called vision of the state, is the new Aloha Stadium Entertainment District. The word housing does not appear, let alone- But the, the, but the RFP was bifurcated, one for the, housing yeah, and one they for a stadium. Up, then they split the thing up in half, one for the entertainment district, and then one for the, the stadium, the, by the way, and the, the, the RFP, the, the re request for proposal, and contracts and so on for the stadium is nowhere to be seen. They'd say maybe by the end of the year, they might put something out. Uh, they won't even have a contract for it if they were able to find a developer until after the next election and the next administration comes in. But in huh. the meantime, then they say, oh, we've got uh, proposals from all these developers and they, they, then the word housing comes in. You know what the word where, where the housing comes in? 650 hotel rooms. First wow. of all, you know, right away you started with 650, 650 hotel rooms. For what? For what? Yeah. We're trying right. to get trying to get tourism under control, and you got 650 hotel rooms. That means it's not for housing. Then well, 650 the hotel rooms in the middle of a in the middle of a yeah. neighborhood. And and you're supposed to build whatever housing you're going to build uh I, I, I have no idea where how it'll be affordable or anything you're going to have to have high end then you're supposed to have retail entertainment retail of some kind uh, bread and circuses and i and i and you and you take away 22 to 25 acres of the 98 acres is to go for the stadium itself right. uh, it, 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 that means 25 less acres for housing it, it uh, uh, and then you put the hotel rooms in after that, so there's less room for housing. Our proposal is very, very simple. That area, and I'm, I'm going to show here, you know, from the Saturday, from the Saturday paper. Let me see. Can I get it up there? I you might know. have to low. You might have yeah. to lower it. Yeah, I might have to lower it. But if you look at the Sunday Insight uh, section at the top, it says Aloha Stadium site, where it was all flattened out in order to build a stadium. Uh, it's about 98 acres. Uh, 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 
Last month, if you would go down Kapahulu Avenue for, and, a, and a house was for sale, a teardown house for sale on Kapahulu Avenue, $1,050,000. Wow. $1,050,000. Now you tell me, what sense does it make with this desperate need for affordable and workforce housing, particularly to get rentals out there, to take 25 acres away from 98 acres and put up a stadium uh, so that uh, the Rolling Stones can come in and say, our last concert we guaranteed before we die. Uh, uh, and that's supposed to entertain us while, we, while none of us have a house to live in. Uh, come on, John. It, we want what we want. What Ben and 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 John and I are, are recommending is you take the whole hundred acres, you go to developers and you say, look, you finance it, you you construct it, you manage it, and you maintain it, and we'll give you a lease for this hundred acres. Now you go build workforce housing and connect it up with the with the rail if it ever gets going, uh, with Pearl Harbor and the rail, and you get ridership, and that way you can at least get some of the operating costs for rail dealt with because you you, you need ridership in order to make, make it work. It's and amazing to me that when you're building a stadium and you're building uh, an entertainment system, so I, I don't know which what subsidizes what. I mean, you oh. know, uh-uh. <laughs> well, that's my point. If at least if, 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 if you go to a developer and give them 100 acres in central Oahu, give it to them. Say, here, you build a house, you finance it. You finance it. You run it. You finance it. They will, they will fight each other. They will fist fight each other to, get, to be able to get in and, and be able to do that. I know that for a fact because that's what happened when we did the same thing with military housing. You tell me. And that's what happened when we did couple A. That's what happened when we did the couple sure. A villages. Come on. It makes so. sense. It makes sense on a state. The other thing is they say, go build all the housing, then tear the stadium down and build a new stadium. So once you get your, your, your new uh, apartment, you can listen to them uh, with drilling and, and, and pounding and uh, while they build a stadium on the 25 acres. Well, while, while, they, while they wait for the uh, Rolling Stones to come and play a concert <laughs> at the, the new Rolling stadium before. In their, in their wheelchairs and come in and, and, and play the stadium. Yeah. Well, so. well, Governor, it, it was a pleasure to have you on today. I, I got to tell you, and it, it, well, it always is. Thank uh, you, your enthusiasm is infectious. And I really, really hope that the wisdom of, you know, separating the two objectives. I mean, doing something that's really, doing two things that are really needed, which is providing a stadium for the University of Hawaii, for uh, its uh, football team and, and providing much needed housing. You well, I and think I and I Ben- up, If I had to sum ahead. up what, if I had to sum up what the, the three wise govs, are, uh, are, are, are proposing. It's housing for Halaba, go Bows. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Thank you, Governor. Appreciate you taking the time to uh, explain what, uh, what it meant when we said Aloha Halaba Stadium. <laughs> <laughs> and hello, and hello to a collegiate stadium uh, in Manoa. Go Bows. Go Bows. All right.